it's actually six o'clock in the morning. Hello everybody, this morning I'm going to remove the cylinder head of a Mark IV Mondeo 2 litre diesel and this car was a 2007. The original story to this vehicle you can find here. This will be the last time I'm going to bang on about this freaking car. The high pressure fuel pump which by the way is right here. This piece of the pump is spun by the camshaft. This pump locked up and subsequently it's broke a piece of the back of the camshaft. The vehicle then broke down and at first glance I believed that the camshaft had actually sheared or snapped. So rather than take the cylinder head off and have to replace all the broken valve guides and all the valves and God knows what, we managed to get a second hand engine with everything on it, turbo, pumped a lot, bang that in the car, car's gone and actually the car's actually been sold now and I called this car the Jonah car. Oh and by the way, just out of correctness, Jonah is from the Old Testament. I just got pulled up on that little fact, I just thought I'd let you know, because I believe Jonah was on a ship and he brought bad luck, there was no wind or something and when all the other sailors discovered that he was bad luck they flung him overboard. Maybe that's why it was in the Old Testament, because in the New Testament they took out all the bad bits. I mean come on, this is 2018. It's not a very Christian thing to do is it, to fling somebody over the side of a ship. Anyway, I'm now going to go out into the shed and remove the cylinder head of this engine. This is not going to be an in-depth of how to remove a cylinder head of a 2 litre diesel Peugeot engine. I will show you as much as I can. Most of this engine has actually been stripped off anyway, like the top covers off and I'm about to pull the cam belt off and it, it's, it's all pretty straightforward stuff anyway. Right, so anyway here it is, the good old Jonah engine. Now I've already unbolted this top manifold cover, so I'm just going to lift this off out of the way. Now the camshaft is all in one piece, but what I have found when I took the cam belt cover off, the camshaft sprocket is actually loose. So if I put a spanner on the bolt, the camshaft is actually turning, but the pulley isn't. So I'm going to turn the crankshaft round so I can get this round to the hole so I can lock it, so I can undo this bolt. That's it. Right, our sprocket's in the right position, but I can't hold the camshaft, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to get an air gun to undo this bolt. That bolt was in bloody tight, and it shouldn't be tight like that. Right, let's see what happens. Get this belt off. Oh, oh my God, are you seeing this? So where the pump has seized up on the back of the camshaft, it's been working against the timing belt on the pulley. This is the result. This was obviously the weakest part that's gone and, and obviously the pulley has just spun and caused all this, all this damage. I think we're going to find quite a few bent valves in this cylinder head. Anyway, let's start getting this bloody engine stripped off otherwise we'll be here all day. This uh, tensioner can come off. There's a little plastic bracket here which goes between the head and the engine block which needs to come off. Here we go. Right, I'm just going to remove all these injector pipes because they've obviously got to come out of the way. There we go. Now these injectors are held down by 7mm Allen key bolts. So I shall now remove all these, or should I say 7mm Allen key nuts. Generally speaking, with a bar and a bit of leverage, you can whack these injectors out. This whole top cover has to be removed now to get to the head bolts, but all these studs that held the injectors down, they need to come out as well. And there's like little Torx bits, little E6 Torx bits. So I'll get all these studs removed from the engine. Your timing chain tensioner is held on by three little Allen key screws. There we go. One chain tensioner. And obviously there's a couple Allen key screws to hold your brake vacuum pump into place. No, yep, that just pops straight off. I was going to get this 10mm bolt out of the way that's holding our fuel high pressure pipe in place and get that pipe out of the way. 
In actual fact, I'm going to take this oil filler neck out of the way, just so I've got a bit more room. There's a bracket down here, which is bolted on in a few places, which could cause a problem getting the head off. So there's only like a couple of 10 mil bolts holding the filler neck onto the engine. That'll pull out of the engine block. See, the dipstick tube is actually connected onto this bracket, which then goes down to the block. So you'd need to remove the dipstick tube or get this bracket right out of the way if you were taking the head off. So I'll remove that bracket. See, there's another bracket here on the engine, which will have to come out, which is actually bolted to the cylinder head and bolted to the engine block. And that can come out of the way. Now I've already removed the turbo and the EGR valve, but I do have other videos showing how this EGR valve and the turbo are removed. We now have something like 25 or so 8mm bolts holding this entire top cover on, which all need to be removed. So now have all our bolts removed, this top cover, with a bit of a pry, should just crack loose. There we go. Now I should be able to lift this cover straight off now. Now you can see where the pump had locked the end of this camshaft up. It's actually snapped this part of the camshaft off. And obviously now to get to the cylinder head bolts, these camshafts need to be removed. So I'm just going to lift them both out of the head and put them off to one side. Oh! It has broke a rocker. One broken rocker. This engine bracket, there's another idler pulley just behind it here, which will need to be removed like so. And you'll have to take this engine bracket off anyway, because some of the bolts go into the head and a couple of the bolts go into the actual block. So we'll take this engine bracket out of the way. There are 10 cylinder head bolts, which are E14s. So I'm going to get all these head bolts whacked out. In actual fact, I can't hold this engine in place because these head bolts are too tight. I'm just going to gun them out. There we go, one head bolt. That's it then. The head's ready to come off. This is so exciting. Not. So this head should just lift straight off. There we go. I'll turn this over and see if we can see any bent valves. Do you know what? I'm absolutely amazed. It has not hit a single valve. And I've poured freeing oil down all the ports of the inlet and the exhausts and nothing has leaked. Oh my God. There's not even any marks on the cylinder head or the valves. And I can honestly say the valves haven't touched the pistons, not even a little bit. There's absolutely no marks on them pistons. So really, apart from this engine needing a new exhaust camshaft and a new sprocket, oh and one rocker that had snapped, this could have been quite an easy repair without having to change the engine. It's actually done naff all in the way of damage. I guess I should be kicking myself now, shouldn't I? I've just gone and changed the engine when there's actually not a whole lot wrong with that Jonah engine. But just to point out here, 2007 Mondeo 2 litre TDCI Peugeot engine. Caution! This engine has been identified as an interference engine. Interference engine! I reckon auto data's just lying. Or that engine was just incredibly lucky. Because let's face it, when both camshafts stop turning, yet the pistons are still going up and down, the camshafts are going to hold a certain amount of valves open, regardless. And it looks like it's clipped one valve on cylinder number one and just broke the rocker. And that's all the damage it's done. And yeah, I know we've just fitted another engine in this car, but the engine that we got cost 500 pound. It came with a turbo, it came with a high pressure fuel pump, which by the way, we're about to go out and get a new one anyway for this old engine. And a high pressure fuel pump, even a remanufactured one, is gonna set you back at least 300 pound. Another camshaft, I'll tell you something, a camshaft from Ford is about 500 pound. Yet you can buy them from the motor factors for just over £100. So it would have been at least £400 before I even started stripping anything else out. So really, 
I think putting another engine in it was probably still the cheapest and best option. You see, if I had wanted to check the compressions to see if any valves were bent to start with before I started taking the head off, I would have had to take all that top off, remove the camshaft, fit a new camshaft, then put the timing belt back on, then I could spin it over and do a compression test or at least see if the engine started. And you see all the time and aggravation it would have taken and expense to fit a new camshaft, put the timing belt back on, a new high pressure fuel pump, and then the valves could have been bent anyway, it would have all had to come apart again. I'm not kicking myself. It's an awful lot of work to remove a cylinder head on one of them engines when it's in the car, especially down the back of the engine where you've got the turbo and the EGR valve and all the rest of the bullshit. It's an awful lot of work and a lot of aggravation. I'm glad I changed the goddamn engine. Anyway, stuff it. That concludes my Jonah car. I shall not talk about this situation no more. But I just wanted to make this video to take that head off just to see what the damage was going to be. Now I've seen it, which was pretty minimal. Well, that's it. That's my morning's work done. I'm out of here. Till the next time. See ya.